my body, because I have a tumor on my pituitary gland, does not work properly. Therefore, my pituitary gland cannot send the correct signals to my adrenal glands, which then my adrenal glands don't produce cortisol. And without cortisol, you die. <laughs> like, I'm dead serious. You um, cannot live without cortisol. Your body has to have cortisol. Cortisol controls your stress, fight or flight. So um, for someone who doesn't have cortisol, they may have panic attacks because obviously you don't have the correct stress hormone, so you can't even regulate stress. You can't control it. That is the first sign and symptom I had of adrenal uh, gland problems I um, was panic. I started having severe panic attacks that were uncontrolled out of nowhere for no reason. Um, then it also affects your whole body because it affects your blood pressure. It affects your sodium levels, your potassium levels. By the way, I get tons of potassium infusions. Like today I had four potassium infusions. So yeah, it um, affects your heart rate. It affects your body temperature. It affects your mood. It affects your appetite. It affects your weight. All of those things. So um, for Addison's disease, for me personally, because I am only my own experience, don't base this off you know, everyone who has Addison's, this is only my experience with Addison's. So yeah, if you're gonna compare my experience with someone else with Addison's, no, don't do that. <laughs> this is just my experience. Like, so for me, when I have an adrenal crisis, which is why I was admitted to the hospital, I was having an adrenal crisis or an Addisonian crisis. It means that my cortisol levels dropped critically low or non-existent because uh, that could also mean that I have no cortisol um, and it's life-threatening and it needs to be treated immediately. And the way that it's treated is by injecting cortisol. So they gave me cortisol into my pick line and inject me with it. And basically what happens is my blood pressure starts dropping like really low blood pressure starts dropping heart rate starts dropping um my body temperature will either be like i usually will get a fever but some people the opposite some people get high hy hyperthermia where they get a low grade like their temperature goes low um so for me i usually get a fever like a low grade fever so a fever and then um uh, sweating that's another big sign um, I was just profusely sweating when I was in the ER and I was sweating just I was in a cold ER like with nothing like tank talk was sweating 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 having severe hypoglycemia like uncontrollable like every every hour two hours I was having hypoglycemia my sugar dropping into the 40s um, despite being given sugar like dextrose dextrose IV is sugar water where they inject it into your into your um, IV. That's basically. Um, so they were giving me that every two hours, and I, and I kept going hypoglycemic, hypoglycemic. Um, also, I was very extremely weak. I could not stand up. I was shaking. Um, I can't see straight. I still can't see straight. My vision is all messed up right now. Everything is really blurry that I literally can't see straight. I'm like walking into things, <laughs> um, which is also another reason why I can't go home because. My vision is all messed up that I'm walking into things, I'm tripping, I'm falling, I'm dizzy. If you can't see straight, a lot of things, you can't do a lot of things if you can't see straight. Anyways, um, so then also the other things is it can cause acne breakouts. As you can see, I have acne, I mean I have some, some breakouts. Uh, I have a filter on right now, you know, but um, sp specifically jawline. The reason why it only breaks out on the jawline. The jawline is where all your hormones are. So that a fun way to know if someone has hormonal acne is where their acne is located. I only have acne on my jawline, and I only have it on my jawline because of the fact that it's hormone related. So when my Addison's is like is like um my cortisol levels are low or when i'm not having the correct treatment with my addison's it, i will know immediately if i start breaking out right on my jawline as immediate sign that something's with my hormones so anyways um yeah and what else
basically it also affects appetite it when you have low cortisol levels you don't have appetite i completely lose my appetite i don't feel hungry i feel just exhausted tired my sodium levels will will get low no, despite the fact that i eat tons of sodium like i one time i ate a whole bag of chips i'm not kidding an entire bag of chips because my sodium levels were low and i was still craving salt and i went and got my blood work done the next day hoping that i ate enough salt and i ate plenty of salt that it can't possibly be low and my sodium levels were low after eating a whole bag of chips the day before like i was just shocked i was like how in the hell is my sodium levels low when i ate a whole bag of potato chips yesterday <laughs> Like, normal person's sodium would be through the roof or their cholesterol. And, like, if you eat too much sodium, it can cause high cholesterol. Most Americans have high cholesterol, and doctors will tell them, you need to eat less salt. <laughs> and I'm over here being told, you need to eat more salt. And I'm like, I already eat loads of salt, and I need to eat more? <laughs> Does not make no sense. But it does when I have Addison's disease. Addison's disease is what causes all of this. And um, there are lots of other factors like POTS. I have postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, which also um, plays a role with my sodium levels, my blood pressure, and my heart rate. So that POTS is the short term for it. It causes me to, when I go from laying to sitting, sitting to standing, my blood pressure will drop low and my heart rate will spike up and I will get tachycardia. Um, and because of this, because my blood pressure it drops low and my heart tries to compensate. When your heart's compensating, trying to pump harder to bring blood flow because I'm not getting enough blood flow to my head. When I go from sitting to standing, the blood's pooling in my legs and my, my body's trying really hard to bring the blood up, upward and from my legs, bring it up so it can get to my head. So your heart will start going tachycardic because it's really trying to work really hard to bring blood up so you don't pass out. And the heart going tachycardic is what causes blood pressure to try to come to pump more you know to move more so that it'll come up but the thing about that is um anyone who has POTS or Addison's disease will always be told to watch out for your salt cravings salt cravings are a sign that you can't ignore so if you are craving salt then that means that you need it that means that your 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 blood pressure is crying out for salt your heart's crying out for salt and um, your body needs it to bring up blood pressure. So high sodium will bring blood pressure up. So for me, if I'm having a day where I feel really lightheaded and I feel like I'm gonna pass out, there's a couple things I would do. One, electrolytes. If I feel, if I'm not feeling good, my POTS or my Addison's, I will start uh, intaking electrolytes. For me, that can mean fluid into my IV. Um, that could also mean um, liquid IV. If you don't know what liquid IV is, it's basically a powder, like a powder drink, um, and it has electrolytes in it, and you mix it into water. I can take liquid IV into my feeding tube. I would run it just like an IV. It would be hooked up to a pump, and it would run, but it would go into my stomach. So I do liquid IV like that. By the way, you can buy liquid IV at the grocery store. It's not like a prescription. Just in case you guys wanted to try it, you can look up liquid IV. Um, so the second thing is Gatorade. That's another, another electrolyte uh, drink that I can put into my tube. Um, yeah, so electrolytes. The second thing is salt, sodium. That's part of the electrolytes. But um, that would be mean like eat something really salty like uh, chips. Basically, that's the saltiest thing I can think of. Or like... Um, nuts because there's protein in there so that might be helpful and then the third thing is sugar so those are like my my the three like rules that I have if I'm not feeling good I check three things I check electrolytes um, I, I make sure that I, I'm intaking electrolytes I make sure that I'm intaking sodium and I make sure I'm intaking um, um, sugar so after I have checked those three things after I have intake um, so sodium uh, after I have intake um, electrolytes, sodiums, and sugar. If I still don't feel good, that's how I know that, oh, I probably should go to the doctor because I've already done everything. So, yeah. Oh. 
anyways so yeah that's how I check myself when um when I'm not feeling good before I go running to the doctors or running to the hospital thinking something's wrong with me I check those three things first um and if I do all of those three things and I still don't feel good then that's when I start to worry because that's when I start to get concerned that it could be my cortisol levels and the only way that I can get treated for Addison's disease is in the hospital for a crisis and that's why I've been here for the last two weeks um so yeah I've been here for an Addison-Ian crisis, or adrenal, adrenal insufficiency, adrenal crisis. That's what it's called. Anyways, so yeah, that's my story, how I ended up at the hospital for two weeks, uh, and why I'm going to a nursing care facility, a skilled nursing facility, uh, like for the next few weeks, just so I can be monitored and leading up to my surgery. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be getting a big, big surgery coming up. I'm kind of scared. <laughs> this is gonna be my second major surgery. Um, I'm kind of scared because there's so many risks. Like this is a really risky surgery, but it's my only hope to like go back to a semi-normal life for myself. <laughs> for me, normal life is going back to my tube feedings and not having a pick line, like in having to do all these infusions. For me, normal life is feeding tube. Uh, yeah, but this all these infusions and having an I, a pick line in my arm and having to do that, that's not a normal life for me. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyways, um, now you guys know the story of my life. <laughs> the story of my, my life the last two weeks. Not even like the story of my life because my life story is just, wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's see. My phone's at 4%. My phone's at 4%. It's not charging. 